All right, folks, this week I am putting Amazon's best-selling survival kit to the test. Now, I recently did a video where we opened this thing up and looked inside. We looked at all of the items and I kind of gave you my opinions on them. In this video, I'm, trying, I'm gonna try to use everything in here to the best of my ability to set up a comfortable camp uh, that could get you through what would otherwise be a miserable night. And then towards the end of the video, I'm gonna just give you my overall impressions of it and tell you whether or not I think this thing is worth the money. Let's get started. So the emergency shelter that they provide in this kit is made out of this just really thin mylar sheeting. Uh, it's made out of the same stuff that those really cheap, like $2 emergency space blankets are made out of. And in my experience, this stuff is very, very delicate. If it gets punctured, it just tears. There's no, there's no like rip stop or anything like that to stop it from tearing. So it just shreds. So I think the best way to use this is not to use this as the shelter itself, but to line the inside of a shelter. And so my plan is to use some of the other items in this kit to make a little lean-to with a bow bed. And then we're gonna use this Mylar sheeting to line the inside, which is going to do two things. It's gonna uh, waterproof it because it looks like rain is coming in and it's also going to act as a heat reflector. So let's uh, dig into this thing a little bit more, see if we can't find a saw and then go find some stuff to make a lean-to with. Got a pocket knife in here. little cable wire saw and this thing's got a a saw as well see how well that works all right so we've got a couple of different items that i think we could use to build a lean-to with we've got a little cable saw so um, we're going to see how this works uh, this little hatchet thing has a small saw on it so we'll see how that works and then we've also got a little cheap pocket knife. Now I did sharpen this knife because all of the blades that came in this kit were very dull. But one of the things that I noticed about this knife uh, that could be very dangerous is that the lock doesn't work worth a darn. Um, just like it doesn't, it doesn't lock the blade at all. And so if you're uh, working on something and this, this blade closes on your fingers, you could have a pretty major cut to have to deal with. And the emergency or the first aid kit that they supply in here is pretty subpar. All right, so I've got a kind of a wonky shaped little fir tree right here. It's kind of in a really dense stand. This would be a great one to take out to kind of thin these trees out some. We'll go up here. It's gonna take a while. So while I'm here, I'm just gonna go ahead and get some of these lower trees or lower branches from these other trees. But we're gonna need a lot of these for uh, our bed. So I don't wanna take too many branches from each individual tree. It weakens them, so I'm just going to kind of spread it around a little bit. Just collect a big, big bunch of these. Thank <laughs> you. 
thing gets stuck. just fraying all apart. So I'm just gonna use just a little bit of this better cordage to strengthen up this. I'm not, I don't really trust this stuff. So this cordage that comes in this kit is not the good, um, I don't know what the technical name for the, like the mil spec paracord is, but this is not it. It's only got two plies and they're polyester, I guess they're polyester, kind of fluffy, not uh, not the nylon plies that are in the good stuff. So keep that in mind. Still works for cordage, but it's not nearly as versatile as good paracord. I'm wounded. Yes. Ah! Ah. That should do it. Thank God I had this first aid kit where I'd lost that finger. Back to work. Now the idea behind the shelter is not to uh, waterproof this thing or anything. In order to waterproof a lean-to with just bowels, you have to have a, literally a ton of bowels. And so my idea with this is not to waterproof it, but to just act as a windbreak and a little bit of a thermal barrier. I'm going to take this, I'm gonna cut it apart, and we're gonna line this thing with it. And this is gonna help block the wind from this because this stuff is very, very delicate. To tie it to this shelter, I'm gonna to have to basically guide this stuff out but there's no grommets in it. And if I punch a hole in this, it's just gonna tear straight out. So the best way to affix a cordage to a piece of mylar sheeting like this is to just take the corner and tie a knot in it and then tie around that knot. This stuff is so delicate that I'm afraid that it's gonna, when I lay on it, it's just gonna rip on this, uh, on these boughs. So I'm gonna lay this down to try to protect it. It's like a giant grocery bag or something. Gotta get creative when you don't have much to work with. All right, so I've got a shelter set up. I've got kind of a fire pit uh, heat reflector thing set up with the second um, space blanket. Now the biggest challenge, or one of the biggest challenges with this kit, aside from the very, very delicate shelter material, is finding firewood. Because without 
a real saw, I'm limited to basically what I can push over or find laying around on the ground. And in these weather conditions, that is probably not gonna work so good. It's been raining for a week, uh, and then before that we had a bunch of snow, so everything's just damp and wet. Um, there is a snag right here behind me that I think I might be able to push over. Um, maybe if I cut just a little bit of it, then I can push it over and, and maybe break it into pieces. This thing sucks. So you might be wondering why I'm not using that little cable saw. Um, honestly, this thing, as bad as this sucks, this is quicker than that little saw. It would take me three days to saw this thing down with that, that little saw. All right, I'm gonna try to push this thing over, uh, but the thing you really gotta watch with these snags like that is if you start rocking them, trying to get them to go, you can snap the tops out of them and that thing come fall and hit you on the head and that'd be bad news. Just like that. Ideally, I would have more firewood than this, but this is the only snag that I could find that was dry standing and that I could get down without a proper saw or an ax. There's like 200 Q-tips. have no idea why you'd need that many Q-tips, but they're here. Uh, might be able to use those for getting a fire going. We're gonna see if we can put this little mini shovel to work more like a trowel. Ground's frozen. I think the only thing this is gonna be good for is maybe digging a poop hole. It does have a compass in it in the end that is pointing exactly the wrong direction. <laughs> Alright so to get a fire going we've got a couple of little fire wicks in here. It looks like a jute that's maybe soaked in paraffin or something. So there's two ferro rods in this kit. Um, one like a standard ferro rod, and then there's this little survival bracelet. On this bracelet, there's like a little miniature rod with a, a striker. So we're gonna see if we can use this one to get the fire going. That'll work. Put that on my wrist so I don't lose this valuable piece of equipment. Bam, there we go, very fashionable. So just to bring this to your attention, this stump that I'm working on, some of you probably have noticed, uh, this thing is solid fat wood, but for this little challenge, I'm just gonna ignore that and pretend it like it's not here. Right there. Wow, look at that. Sparked right up. So, little mini ferro rod worked pretty good. So I don't have any way to cut this firewood, so I'm just gonna have to burn these big pieces in half so that they're a little bit more manageable. Gonna be a wet one. Let's 
So the reason that I spent so much time uh, building this bow bed to get me off the cold ground is that this mylar material has no insulative value. And so it doesn't protect you from heat loss through conduction. And so in a lot of the photos that you see associated with these things, you'll see people just like laying in the snow. That's not gonna work. If you lay one of these mylar blankets on a cold surface like the ground or snow and then lay on it, uh, you're gonna lose all of your heat through conduction. The ground's just gonna suck the heat right out of you. And so you have to have some sort of air, trapped air, which is this, uh, the bow mattress is, is doing. But although this stuff doesn't insulate at all, it does reflect heat and so it helps keep you from losing heat to the environment through convection. So they gave us a couple of glow sticks so we can have a rave. So a glow stick like this could come in really handy for marking your campsite. Uh, if you have to go off after dark for some reason, you're afraid you might not be able to find your way back, just hang this up and you can see these through the woods for a long, long way. Or if you're trying to attract attention to yourself, you could uh, take off all your clothes, go running around naked, swinging this thing around and somebody will find you. The little the little lamp works pretty good. I did have to add some batteries to the kit because uh, this, there's a flashlight in there too, but there was no batteries that came in it. Little flashlight's got a pretty good little beam on it. Man, glow sticks, strobe lights, we are on track. So there's a couple of items that across the board every single survival kit should have and one of those items is some way to process water whether that's a pot to boil water a filter water purification tablets whatever it is it needs to have something and that's one of the big omissions from this kit is it has none of that stuff but hey we got glow sticks and 200 q-tips still haven't figured that one out so a lot of people focus on food because that's just kind of the glamorous thing is fishing kits and going out and, and gathering food, stuff like that. But uh, what's gonna kill you is exposure and then after exposure, the lack of water. We've got the exposure pretty much taken care of with this shelter, even though it is, in my opinion, woefully inadequate. But the water thing is, is huge. If we don't have any way to gather clean water, you're not gonna make it for very long. I've already got a rip in this thing. Just up above me, I'm hoping that it doesn't get any worse. Like 80 degrees. Man, that was fun. Not really. That was a long night. But, we made it. So, it kind of rained for the first part of the night, but luckily it stopped because there's a giant hole in this thing right above where I was. It was dripping on me a little bit and I had to kind of move things around. Tuck, uh, I ended up tucking the um, mylar back up under some of the supports to kind of get it up off of me. It was also condensating pretty bad. But I did stay warm pretty much all night. There was a couple times the fire died down and I got a little bit chilly, but... <sighs> Definitely warmer than the last time I was out here. It was negative four. Well... There's no coffee in that little kit, so I'm gonna go get some coffee. We got a 
Got a pin, and I got a feeling that if I head out on a bearing of about 125 degrees, I'm gonna find some coffee. So before I take off from this camp, I'm gonna leave a note for my potential rescuers. And I'm gonna leave the bearing on here, the time, the day, if I know it. Now one thing to keep in mind is that these compass, or this little cheap compass, doesn't have a declination adjustment. If you're not familiar with what declination is, it's basically the difference between true north and magnetic north. A better compass, a good quality compass, is going to have an adjustment to calibrate that because it varies depending on where you are on the planet. So, I am going to write a note. I'm going to put it in a plastic bag and I'm going to tack it to that tree right there. Safety pins they gave us. So the challenge here was to try to make the best use that I could out of whatever I could find in this kit. And I tried to do that. Um, but when it comes right down to it, I would have traded everything in this kit for just a quality saw or a quality axe, a hatchet, even a fixed blade knife. I think I could have gotten more done and spent a more comfortable night with just one good quality tool than this whole kit. But if you're looking for just a, a cheap, quick uh, gift for a kid that likes to play in the woods, I think it'd be great for that. There's all sorts of little gadgets and gizmos in there to play with. And I, I can know when I was a kid, if I had gotten this, I'd had a great time with it. So in a future video, I'm going to show you a kit that I would put together with the stuff that I would put in it. The components, the tools, the compass, the everything that I would put in this kit. We're going to build one out so that it's not going to tear up on you when you need it. Um, luckily, it quit raining last night because I would have been very soggy uh, had, it quit, had it continued raining because there's a giant hole in this thing right above where I was sleeping. So... That's going to wrap it up for this one. I uh, hope y'all enjoyed it, and we'll see you on the next one. I'm going to get some coffee. We'll see y'all later. So I just want to show you how delicate this Mylar is. There's, there's one, little, one little tear right here. Then this actually happened when I took it out of the package. But if I put any pressure on this, it just... It, this is not material that you make a shelter out of.